to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We now move to the uh, public forum portion of our meeting where citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to uh, three minutes and uh, for items that are not on today's agenda. Does anyone wish to address the commission? Yes. Please step to the podium and state your name and address, please. Hello, I'm Tim Pestinger from uh, Salina, Kansas here, 525 Queens Road. Uh, several of us have been talking for a while about this, this jail that's in proposal. Uh, <coughs> we'd like to know uh, if the, with the price tag that's going to come along with that to the taxpayers, if the Kmart store on Broadway would be an option. That's we, the question that I have, whether it would be a viable structure and building that's already there large lot, lots of parking, huge building to do whatever they'd want to do in, with a proximity not too far from where they're at right now, versus spending many, many more millions elsewhere to build a new jail just because we need a new jail. You know what I mean? So that's my question. I'll respond to that uh, <clears throat> slightly in that we aren't going to discuss, uh, Tim, uh, uh, property acquisitions at this time, uh, which we may or may not be in negotiations with. Uh, um, obviously, if we state that we're interested in property A or property B, the price is going to go right up, right up the wall. So we're not going to discuss, openly discuss uh, those in real estate negotiations that may or may not be going on at this time. Well, under, I understand that it's you know it's a dead horse, and, and right now, with as we see it, well, and uh, it's not a dead horse. Uh, we are openly discussing that among our uh, in the commission meetings in our study sessions. Uh, there has been no consensus reached at this time. I can tell you that. So, but we can talk about. I mean, the, we we're can. in the in the we're in the process of of uh, selecting architects. So, okay. I mean, we've sent out the proposals. Have, have we sent them out? Okay. Andrew, I'll let you respond and, to that. And, and then that, that would be part of the architect's job is to decide, you know, come up with options for us, Tim. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and quite Andrew. frankly, we're, we're not, uh, we haven't decided if we're going to build a new jail, if we're going to renovate the jail, if we're going to do nothing. That total thing has not been, has not been uh, we haven't reached the end of that line yet. Okay. So, and I, I sense your frustration and I share it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, I mean, uh, in the other, I guess the other flip side to the coin is, you know, you hear all this talk, nobody ever wants to step forward about everything going on in this city, not being progressive enough, not going after those larger interest, uh, larger employee companies. And we could go on and on about that. We could go on and on about that 12,000 foot entity that we have out there, literally in that air, airport, why we haven't had something since Schilling closed. With 1966 or 67 when they closed, what was Salina? Maybe I'm just off the top of my head. I believe it was somewhere around 37,000 people in 67. And we're not at 50,000 yet and we're watching all these communities around us grow? McPherson, Hayes, what if Lawrence, what if Manhattan, what if Kansas City had this 12,000 foot airstrip out here? What would they have done? And why haven't we? I think those That's are questions. The other quest you know, I'm just bringing a few things up. Those are questions that I would certainly encourage you to ask uh, the city of Salina and the Chamber of Commerce. Well, it's, it's about uh, all of us. I mean, county, I understand city, that, but, both, but the so county can't really I'm, do anything about I'm, that. I understand that. But uh, it's just that, you know, we j if we're going to be progressive, let's get after it. But let's do it in a smart way, especially with this jail. You know, if that thing, I don't know what the price tag they were talking about on it, 30, 40, 50 million, whatever it may be. And if it's not done for two or three years, you know that price is going to be 15% higher than, than what they're talking about now. No doubt. When we could take that structure over there, possibly, and do something with it. 
So that's my point. Andrew, did you have something you wanted to respond in there at all? Well, yeah, this is, we are in the process of selecting architects right now. We don't know uh, what what structure, if it, if we even could use it. I mean, we're not looking at it right now, but any options open at this point in time, um, whether it's building new, whether it's utilizing our own facility, we just don't know, and that's why we selected an architect. We haven't even um, decided, the commission has not even decided whether they're going to move forward with the jail. They need an architect's opinion to, to proceed. Let me tell you, my frustration there uh, comes coming from the private sector, is is the how slowly the wheels of government turn, and I and I share your frustration. I yeah. truly do, okay. and uh, we've got our foot on the gas, but uh, our clutch is slipping. If you know what I mean, yeah. we're not getting anywhere so okay. far. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Doug Bramp. Um, I got to think about my address. Twenty two forty six Pinecrest <laughs> Circle. I think it was last Friday, Andrew gave the presentation at the Ambux group and did a good job um, sharing the, I guess, the needs or the problems in the community regarding our current jail and the, the moving the prisoners, the, the, I guess, the shuffling of those people that's done on an ongoing basis. But just backing up Tim's point earlier, you know, I think there are a lot of people in the community that feel that maybe we have champagne taste on a beer budget where we're spending 30 million here and 40 million there. And, and I, I think many of us are frustrated by the federal government when they keep spending, spending, spending. And of course, they have a printing press where they can keep printing money, and we do not have that. Tim mentioned it um, briefly. We all know the face of retail is changing. The Amazon. Amazon.coms of our world are, are changing the entire, re in, entire retail environment, opening up spaces. Tim mentioned the Kmart store. There's other, other properties out there like that. And it, it, it's kind of a, a funky cliche. But in regards to the jail, I think maybe we um, don't need to think outside the box, but we do need to think maybe inside the box. Why? And... and it sounds like Bob. It sounds like you guys are already exploring those options. But you know, why not do something like that? Why not think different, or maybe why not try something different? Certainly, certainly in the system, we have some nonviolent offenders that really don't need a high, high security environment. But if they were covered by four block walls with with the facilities inside. It seems like maybe something could be done for a fraction of the cost. And with that, I'm going to sit down, and I just wanted to put in my two cents worth. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Anyone else wish to address the commission? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. And by the way, uh, I, w I will speak on the airport authority. I attended their meeting last week, and that will be coming up at the end of our meeting today. Uh, we'll now move on to regular business. Item number one. Approve agenda for public forum as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda for the public forum as presented. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve today's agenda for the public forum. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number two. Commercial property annual survey discussion with Sean Robertson, County Appraiser. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. Um, there who... I was asked to come uh, talk about uh, commercial rent and expense information surveys that were sent out uh, approximately a month ago. Um, just wanted to start out by saying um, that uh, these are sent out or supposed to be sent out by annually by, by every county. I can't speak for the other counties whether they do or not. We have sent them out annually in some form or another for at least 30 years that I know of. Um, we sent out approximately a thousand this year. Um, so um, just to get into a little bit of uh, discussion about it, kind of a history of some of these surveys. Uh, apparently uh, there have been some discussions um, with people other than myself. I, I'll be honest, personally, I have not gotten one email, one phone call, one comment. Uh, I have not heard from a single person about these. So I, I just to set the record straight, we have 
I, I figured that's why I was here. But, um, but anyway, just a little history. Back in 1963, uh, the Appraiser's Compliance Guide for the State of Kansas said that, you know, the capitalization approach to property valuations is, is a, a method of uh, valuing property based on the income yield of the property. And an investigation of normal rentals in, a, in an area will establish a basis for determination of net income uh, to be returned and, and be able to set values that way. So this certainly is, is not a new thing. At least it's been used by uh, county appraisers for um, nearly 60 years now at least. That's as far back as, as I could find. And again, we've sent these out annually for at least the last 30 years that I'm aware of. Um, some requirements, um, I won't read through every statute here, but, um, you know, the property valuation process has an entire chapter in statute about it, um, hundreds of statutes. Uh, the main one is that each parcel of property is appraised at its fair market value, and then a, another statute uh, sim uh, just below that says that the earning capacity is indicated by a lease price, capitalization, and net income as a way of establishing market value of a property. <clears throat> We're also directed uh, to um, appraise uh, properties in accordance with the uniform standards um, of appraisal practice, and that's not just mass appraisers, that's also fee appraisers or what a lot of people know as bank appraisers. Uh, all appraisers are required to do that. And uh, one of their standards says that we must, not can, but must develop uh, value by capitalization and net income or potential earnings when possible. So there's another statute. Obviously, we have to follow the policies, procedures, and guidelines of the Property Valuation Division of the Department of Revenue of the state. Um, and a couple of uh, sections of their compliance guide address that, uh, that any of that analysis should include market rents, vacancy, operating expenses, uh, allowable operating expenses, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, and a capitalization rate analysis, and that this analysis should be completed for all classes of income producing commercial, industrial, and apartment properties. Um, again, they're in their compliance guide, which we are required to follow, says that uh, income and expense information is gathered using questionnaires mailed or delivered to landowners or property managers, and that the county should attempt to follow up uh, on those questionnaires when they're not returned or they're incomplete. So I've heard some discussion about uh, are we um, allowed or authorized to send out some of these things. Uh, not only are we allowed and authorized, we are required to. Um, responses to these surveys, nowhere in statute does it say that uh, uh, someone that receives one of these is required to respond um, and it is, we, um, we never tell people it's required. We certainly follow the statutes and laws um, at all times and if we are simply asked the question, am I required to respond to this, the simple answer is no. We don't talk around that or try to get, get information out of someone that uh, does not want to volunteer it. Um, I did want to point out on the second part of this that there is a statute, 79-1448, that in an appeal of leased commercial and industrial property, the owner is required to give three years of income and expense information, uh, generally not to the appraiser, but more to the Board of Tax Appeals in order to get a change in value. So um, there are times uh, further down the line in an appeal process where it is required. However, um, just in responding to a survey, uh, it's not. Um, there's always some concern by property owners, and rightfully so, I understand, 
uh, that this information uh, may get disseminated to competitors um, or other uh, people um, in the public. Um, again, we follow the law at all times. Uh, the appraiser cannot disclose any financial information used in determining uh, property value, and we do not do so. I want to get into, because I think there's a, a misconception of how this is used. In no way does the income of a business at a property um, matter to us in valuing that property. It is the property we're valuing, not the business that's located on the property. So as it says here, the income or rent, and maybe that's a... a a name that we should use more often rather than saying an income approach. It's a rent uh, that we're looking at. The income or rent attributable to the property is used to establish market rent rates for different types of properties. Um, the income, as I've said before, the income attributable to the business located at a property is not relevant to the valuation of the real estate itself. Um, expenses attributable to a property and attributable to a property might be maintenance or repairs, insurance, utilities, some sort of uh, reserves for uh, repair, larger repairs later on. Um, those are used to establish the market expense rates for different types of properties. Some expenses of owner-occupied properties can be attributed to the property itself and would be the same whether the property is leased or not, and that's why at times we... Um, we ask for information from owner-occupied properties. doesn't have anything to do with the income of the business. It has to do with uh, some of the expenses that would be the same whether that building is owner-occupied or uh, being rented out. <clears throat> uh, the net income of a property, again, I can't stress enough, not of the business that's located there. Uh, is capitalized using an expected market return to establish a value of the real estate itself. One thing I wanted to uh, bring up is uh, these commercial income or rent and expense surveys are just one of many different surveys uh, that people receive either from the state of Kansas, uh, from uh, the appraiser's office, um, all different types of, of entities in order to value properties. So just, you know, some of these include uh, farm crop and pasture rents, uh, sales validation questionnaires, which are required, um, personal property renditions, mobile home park listings, marine and boat storage listings, and, um, you know, all sorts of different surveys along with uh, the one that we do most often is the residential property interviews and door hangers. Uh, we either interview people at the property or leave a door hanger on approximately 3,500 residential properties every year. And again, um, all of these are um, not only allowed but required by the state for us to do. So just to sum things up, um, rent and expense surveys have been used in Kansas for well over 50 years, as 63 is as far back as I could find. Um, Saline County has sent these out in, again in some form or another uh, for at least the last 30 years. Um, all these surveys and questionnaires, even the others that I mentioned um, for valuation are statutory, meaning they're legislatively required or authorized. So I want people to understand this is not um, an appraiser issue. It's not a commission issue. This is legislative. And I understand that there are concerns at times, and I understand that at times people don't like these. This is a legislative issue, and, and that's who has control over this. Um, Rent and expense information received by appraisers is uh, confidential, and it's also not required to be given. Um, but uh, current rent and expenses assist greatly in <coughs> establishing fair and accurate property values, and that's what we as appraisers are charged uh, with to do. Um, and then uh, 
again, the commercial rent and expense surveys are just one of several uh, surveys and questionnaires that are used uh, by the state and, uh, and the county. Okay, I, I want to emphasize that the uh, Sling County Commission or any county commission in the state of Kansas has no authority over the, uh, the appraiser's office. Uh, they're, uh, as Sean has alluded to, they are legislated through the state legislature and uh, the county commission has uh, absolutely no authority to, to uh, discharge responsibilities or tell uh, the appraiser's office to change the way they're doing business or, or how they're approaching people or anything else. So I want to make that clear. Uh, further comments or questions from the commissioner in responses to Mr. Robertson? I don't think anybody was questioning your authority to, to ask those questions. I just think in reading over that letter, it was a little unclear that somebody had the option to, to not do it. Okay. And, and that was, I've seen those letters before and I've received those letters before. Right. So um, I, I understand the history of it. It just, it made it sound like it was a must and, and, and uh, that, that was the only comments that I got from anybody. Okay. So well, I, I appreciate we, your time. We can certainly review some of the wording in the right. letter for next year. And this is good that you came, and we're always happy that you come and kind of explain what you do, and I think it's really helpful. So thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. And, John, you said you sent out a 1,000 of these, and I'm assuming all commercial yes. questionnaires? Yes. Okay. And number of commercial properties? Number of commercial properties are about 2,400 total. 24, so not quite half. Right. And I'm assuming the language has changed in your questionnaire yes we, over the we years. review the language every year uh well uh, certainly every couple of years so that's something we can absolutely do again for next year and i'm a commercial property owner also and right. and um it's um definitely um owner occupied mm -hmm. so no rent included in right. it, in any but it uh i don't ever remember getting your reaction from people and even myself when I read that letter so I'm I'm glad to see that you're going to review it and hopefully soften it up a little bit okay so I appreciate it thank you what is your response rate at least so far okay. now we've been getting um, at least a few every day but okay. uh, we're a, a little over a hundred so uh, somewhere over 10 percent at this point yeah all right, thank you. Uh, that concludes uh, today's agenda. Uh, are there, is there any other business or announcements from commissioners to come before the commission? I will state that I uh, attended the uh, Sland Airport Authority meeting last Wednesday. Uh, further, I want to comment that uh, all airport authority meetings are open to the public. Uh, they're held on the uh, third Wednesday of the month, the second floor conference room, hangar 600, 2720 Arnold Court. Uh, a lot of information came out of last week's meeting. Uh, number one, uh, there's 140 students currently enrolled in the pilot program at Kansas State University, which is a significant increase. I'm sorry I don't have exactly how many it was uh, uh, last year, but it, this is way over what they had last year. Also, uh, an Air Force ROTC program has been started with 18 uh, students currently enrolled in that. Uh, the airport is averaging 875 passengers per week booking on jet service on SkyWest Airlines, and that is a big increase. Uh, we are anticipating direct service to Denver soon with no stops, and they currently stop in Hayes uh, to and from Salina, and those are going to be eliminated the way I understand it. Uh, new service is in the works with non-stop non -stop jet service to Houston, which will really be welcomed. Uh, Jaded Thunder will return uh, for 18 days in August, and there are about 900 people that participate in that. Uh, hotel rooms are uh, around Salina are already booked up. Uh, a few hundred cars are also uh, rented currently through a local dealership, so all the money that's uh, coming through that uh, will be retained uh, locally. Uh, further, I'd like to say that uh, in the month of May, there was a 24% increase as compared to May of last year uh, for air traffic. Uh, action at the airport. Uh, fuel flowage shows a 31% uh, increase and that, that uh, uh, money is directly attributable to Salina and comes right back into the um, airport's coffers. Uh, airport activity is 33% is what the increase was uh, from a year ago. Uh, bigger, bigger fish to fry and I'll allude to this. Uh, uh, the consider of a, consideration of a lease for the hangar 
H504 to an air ambulance company. Uh, that did come to fruition. It is effective July 15th, 2019, the lease terms for five years. They will be employing 16 full-time people, pay range 55 to $90,000 per year with all people living in Salina. So that is uh, pretty significant news. The big one uh, which was released yesterday is consideration for lease terms of, for a lease hangar H959. Uh, to most of us that is known as Big Bertha. Uh, for aircraft and maintenance repair company, effective date July 1st, uh, 2019, lease term again for five years. Uh, they will start up on July 1st, that, those papers were signed yesterday. Uh, they're, they're looking at a net of 450 jobs in Salina within the next three years with an average pay of $24 an hour. They're going to start up at a, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 employees right away. The, the, uh, the building will take a considerable renovation, uh, which they did let a, uh, a bond issue for that uh, last week. Uh, there are going to be, I think they will be able to uh, work on four huge aircraft at the same time, uh, one as big as a 747, a 777, a 737, and a regional jet all at the same time. When they work on one of these big jets, it will be 100 people working on that plane at a single time. So it is pretty significant to Solana to get this. And uh, I will say, in response to, to uh, questions, they're, they're in the works for an additional aircraft company that's going to be coming in. And I don't, I don't know all the details on that, but this has been going ongoing for some time, but it's, it's a, a financial situation with the company rather than the airport authority itself. So in my opinion, it's, it's some pretty significant times at the airport right now, lots of action. Uh, Tim, I'll work on it for you uh, uh, in regards to what goes on at the airport, but I think that number is somewhere around 40, 35 to 40 percent of the total uh, payroll in Solana it comes from the airport authority. Not the airport authority, but buildings that are located at the airport. So it's pretty significant. But uh, again, the, the, the uh, airport authority is working in conjunction with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Solana Economic Development Company Corporation, uh, they're all involved in the city of Solana, um, county when we can be. So there's some significant things going on. <clears throat> Any other questions, uh, comments from commissioners? I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded that we adjourn today's meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. We will have study session uh, after a short pause in the adjoining 107B, so everyone is entitled to attend that. Thank you for watching.